Our core demo is truckers clocking on and hookers clocking off. Come on. It's the Kevin and Bean Show. K-Rock. Hey, we also are going to be talking to a man who has made a documentary about the problem that we talked about last week with the opening week of baseball season about how 70% of Dodgers fans still can't see the games on TV. What's that all about? We'll talk to the the, uh, director of Moneyball 2 on the program today. I don't care for the Kevin and Bean Show. It it sounds wrong to the ear. The world famous K-Rock. It is a freak show, no question. Freak show. The Kevin and Bean Show on K-Rock. Freak show. It's time for Dodger baseball. Gotta be honest, Allie, I, uh... A couple times over the weekend, mm-hmm. pulled up my iHeartMedia app and listened to a little Vin Scully calling Dodger games. You have to. You got to. This Especially is his last season. Especially if you don't have season. Time Warner. <laughs> Here's a uh, man who is a, is it fair to say, Tom Wilson, you are a lifelong baseball fan? I love baseball. All right. Dodgers fan? Uh, I am. Uh, I've, I've had tickets for the Dodgers. I've been here 27 years, but I'm a Cub fan. Okay, so, but I'm so a Dodger you, fan. I love the Dodgers. I, oh, just, I, I just feel for your heart. You're welcome. Well, I'm sorry. You. No, I understand. Yeah. I mean, the Dodgers haven't won a World Series since 1988, but compared to the Cubs, the Dodgers are red hot, right? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, so, oh, and over time? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Haley's Comet has been by twice since we won. <laughs> well, the reason Tom is here is he is a filmmaker, and he has a new documentary that is out that is called Moneyball 2. And this is Moneyball T-O-O, a baseball story. And I thought that was a very clever title. But, Tom, tell me wh- how the, uh, the inklings of the idea for this film came to you, sir. Well, I have just felt like, you know, as we were going through the second year of this, of this uh, deal that... Uh, People, the Dodger fans in particular were having a hard time figuring out a lot of finger pointing, mm-hmm. and they were trying, having a hard time figuring out, you know, who, who, who's, how did this happen? Who's, who's to blame who's for to me blame? not being able to see the Dodgers on TV? Says because most of Los Angeles, it's got to be, it's what close to seventy percent of people have no access to the games. Right? I'd say it's half right by now with the charter deal and everything, but it, you know, that's nitpicking. But you know, and, and I didn't want to talk about who's to blame. I just, I got to because that seemed like the trap that we were all put into as Dodger fans. I wanted to, I wanted to focus on the cause. How did we get here? So I kind of structured the documentary to say, okay, what what caused this mess? Why can't half of Los Angeles see the team they love? And that's where I went. And I think another question that I had when I was watching your documentary is, it's not electricity or water. Do we have a right to be able to see baseball games for free? I wondered about that when I was watching your documentary is, are we complaining? And look, it's not our business. We're not the ones who are running it to make a profit. Do we have a right to complain? Do we look at baseball differently because we feel like it should be free for all of us? Well, you know, baseball is a special exa- a special case. They have an antitrust exemption with the law, so they have they have special because they're considered a sport like a group and a sport and not really a business. So it's a whole different thing, and and we kind of you know this community whether we have a right or not to to see it free. This community built that team, and so you know I think this is a matter of you know not not being greedy. You know that 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 they should understand that you know there's people out there, and the people this this affects most are the people who can't afford it, or the people who you know the the, the parts of of Los Angeles who. You know, and 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 they love this team. So mm-hmm. it's been and it's been taken away. And it's you know that your your point is is valid, but I just don't see that as as you know really the issue is whether or not. No, I understand, free. and you're right. There's a lot of people who can't afford to pay to get cable television. And as you point out in your documentary, um, there are a lot of people who would pay for it, but don't even have the option because Time Warner is not or Charter is not even available in the neighborhood in which they live. I want to talk about the Guggenheim Group because I thought this was the most striking part of your whole film, Tom, when you quoted from the letter that they issued to the public when they bought the team. This is the the group with Magic Johnson and others when they bought the team. And I want you to listen to these words from that letter back then, two and a half years ago, and think about what's happened since. Dear Dodger fans, as the new owners of the Dodgers, we accept this responsibility with great humility and appreciation. This team is a community treasure. The title of ownership is merely a statement on paper. This team belongs to you. It belongs to everyone who has dared to love Dodger baseball with a passion. Thank you for your love of the game. Thank you for always believing in this team. And thank you for being the best fans in baseball. 
Doesn't that sound like the exact opposite of what they then went out and did? It's enraging. It's (laughs) enraging listening to that. It is. What greedy bastards. Well, they just play both sides of the fence. They want our loyalty. They want us to love the team. They want us to, you know, cherish it. And every year, you know, come back and come. And then they play this game with the TV deal. And it's, it's just... It's crazy. Is this, Tom, the direction that it is going in other cities? Is this where baseball is headed, is to, 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 to make more of the money from the TV deal than they do from even the turnstiles? So why not make as much as you can? Well, they are definitely going to go go that direction. I think uh, in, in the documentary, you see that in 2020, the Chicago Cubs have a tel- television deal coming up, and they're going to start their own station, their own channel, and then they're going to put it on their own, you know, distribute it their own way. They're going to take it off the air, um, over the air, pu- public airwaves, mm-hmm. and, you know, and, then, and they're going to maximize profits, which is, hey, listen, I, I, I like capitalism. I'm a business person. Yeah, you'd like to make money off your movie, certainly. I, sure, I would, but uh, I'm also giving it away to K-Rock, you know, as a K-Rock promotion for the, for, the, for the day, so anyone can watch it at any time today. Oh, how do they do that? Well, I think there's going to be a link on on your site. Okay. And they can go to it and just go. It's, it's yes, fun. that's right. We will tweet it out, and we will also put it on the Kevin and Bean Facebook page, a link to the documentary called Moneyball 2. If you want to see a lot of people talking about how we got to this point and what's likely to happen next. And I wanted to ask you about that, Tom, because when we brought this up at the, on the opening day of baseball last week, we had callers on the line who were saying things like, well, we should boycott the team. We shouldn't buy tickets to go to the stadium and things like that. None of that sounded like it was going to make much of an impact because there are so many people in Southern California. There's always going to be somebody to buy the ticket that you decide not to. Is there anything that fans can do to change the Guggenheim Group's mind and rework that deal? Or is it just this is the way it is and eventually we're just going to get tired of grousing about it? Well, I don't know if there's anything they can do to change things, but I know that shining the light on the cause of things will will definitely somehow have an impact. Stop pointing the fingers at Time Warner Cable. Stop pointing the fingers at DirecTV. They're just looking out for their shareholders. And that's their their businesses, and they're they're not the they're not the stewards of Dodger fans. One entity in this situation is the stewards of Dodger fans, and that's Guggenheim Baseball Partners. And for everybody to point the finger over here and over there and not focus on what caused this problem, that will keep things like this from happening in the future. And that's what we need to focus on. Whether we can fix this or not, that's what we need to focus on. I'm sure you tried to get people like Magic Johnson to sit down with you for the documentary. How gracefully did they decline? They said, talk to our publicist. I called their publicist, publicist and he said, and it's in the, all this is in the documentary. And he said, you know, go talk to the cable companies. Mm-hmm. And I went, okay. Right. And that, yeah, and that's We're that's... too busy counting our money. <laughs> we can't be bothered right now with your little documentary. What do you think is the long-term effect for the Dodgers franchise as a result of this deal being made, Tom? Well, you can see I have uh, Daniel Durbin from USC in in the documentary, and I think Bill Shaken and Richard Sandover from the New York Times. And there's, um, who am I leaving out? Meg James, uh, Bill Platsky. um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, they basically make the point. What was the question again? What's the long-term effect (laughs) going to be for the franchise? Uh... As a result of the games not being able to be seen. At the end of the day, uh, they're going to make a lot of money. And at the end of the day, they're going to, you know, there's always this big big dialogue now in baseball about we're losing the young fans. We're losing the young fans. We've got to make the game faster. Let's make it two outs and three balls and or two balls and one strike. And, you know, they want to change the rules. We're going to lose fans, and we're going to lose fans because they're, the audience is being chopped down to people who can just afford to pay it. It's going to be just, you know, uh, corporations that are going to buy all the seats in the stadium, and the people that can watch it are going to people who, be people who can pay a $140 cable bill. And the youth of this city are not going to be watching the Dodgers, and it's going to be bad for the game. That's the long-term effect. You sound like you're still as ticked off about it now as you were when you decided you needed to make this documentary. I told you, I told you, I love baseball. I don't know if you remember when I did the, I, I did the foam asterisk. You guys had me on a, yes, a while back. You're I, the guy who did the foam asterisk. I, I love baseball, and you know, I know it's not like uh, Stan Kasson said. It's not about uh, widows and orphans, you know, and and it's not. It's not. There are more important things in life, but this affects a lot of people in this city, and it affects the game I love. And yes, I am passionate. 
Well said. I mean, if it's a type of thing you grew up watching to have it taken away from you because somebody wants to make even more billions than they were already going to make, it does hurt a little bit. The film is called Moneyball 2. That's T-O-O. You can see it uh, today for free. Tom has been very generous to offer that up for K-Rock listeners, and we'll put that link up on the Kevin and Bean Facebook page if you want to watch it today for free. And if you're, you don't get to it and you forget, it is available on demand through Vimeo.com, and it's really definitely well worth your time. Tom Wilson, great to see you again, man. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Oh, brothers and sisters, good morning. The Kevin and Bean Show on K-Rock. K-Rock.